Hello and welcome to Swift Goose. Today I'm going to show you how to easily start creating your own 3D models out of real world objects using RealityKit's new photogrammetry framework. So here I have Ornstein from the Dark Souls board game. And in the background, I have the 3D model that the framework was able to create. Okay, before you get started with actually creating your models and using the photogrammetry framework, there's a couple of requirements you need to be aware of. First, you need to be on macOS Monterey Jack Cheese 12.0 beta or later. Second, you need to be on Xcode 13 beta. Third, you need a pretty decently specced Mac to actually do this. It's pretty taxing on your CPU, and I'll get to that in just a second. Fourth, you need to have a camera, obviously, or a phone. In my case, I just used an iPhone XR, and that was fine enough to take pictures of my model. And then finally, you want to have a model that's not too reflective. Apple has a couple of guidelines on how to actually do this, how to take pictures, choosing your model and your background and stuff like that, and I'll put a link to that in the description for this video as well. Now back to point number three in terms of the spec of your Mac. Let me show you what the spec of my Mac is. Basically, it's a 16-inch 2019 Intel-based 6-core, and we got 16 gigs of RAM. Now, the Intel Mac did okay when actually running this whole photogrammetry API. Um, it took pretty long compared to an M1, so I did comparisons against an M1, and the M1 absolutely blows the Intel out of the water in terms of running this API and building out your USDZ file, which seemed pretty obvious given the M1. But in both cases, the CPU usage just went through the roof, so you really need some time if you want to actually build these or a decently specced Mac. Down here, I have what exactly the results were. So different rendering details, we had preview, reduced, medium, and full for the Intel MacBook Pro, and then the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch. So obviously 11 minutes and 17 seconds for a medium render, as opposed to 40 minutes and six seconds, that's pretty dang good. And I put NA here for both of these because the full render didn't actually work. Basically the program crashed at the very end on both times, and I ran this a couple different times to try to finish it out, and it never actually completed, it always crashed. So I'm gonna have to report this bug to Apple. And next I'll go through how I took the pictures of my model and how you might be able to do it yourself too. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is put down your model onto a black surface like this. In this case I used a t-shirt, but you can use a cloth or a napkin, something else like that. And then make sure that you have plenty of light surrounding your model. And basically all you're going to do is take a picture and then move the model. Take the picture, move the model. Take the picture, move the model. And you're gonna keep doing that all the way around and make sure you keep spinning the model and getting pictures of all different sides until you get all the way back to the front. And that's it for taking the pictures. Okay, so now that you've taken all your pictures, you're gonna to wanna to put them into a single folder. So I've got my Ornstein 2 folder here, and in here I've got all the pictures that I took. Just open up a sample one. At this point, we need to open up Safari or whatever browser you want to use, and we're going to go to developer.apple.com slash documents. And there's a specific document here that Apple has given for taking pictures for 3D object capture. And they basically give you a whole project that you can just download and build yourself. And I'll put that link to this project in the description below. So after you download it, you're going to open it up in your downloads folder and open it up in Xcode 13 beta. And this is what you're going to get. The project is called Hello Photogrammetry. And the first thing you want to do when you open this up is actually click on the top level project here and make sure that your general team is set specifically. So you need to set your team and your signing cert or else you'll get errors when you try to build this. And at this point, let's go to our folder here and we want to click on main. And there's a lot of stuff in here, but for the most part, you can ignore it. You can also archive this product by going to archive and it's going to build it out as a command line tool if you specify just the product, which is right here. And that's going to allow you to run this from the terminal and throw in your own arguments. 
I've done it both ways and they both work, but I'll just do the Xcode one for now. In the meantime, this is archiving in the background. And here we go. So in this case, you would just basically hit distribute content and then you want to do build products next. And then we'll put this here as photo test and we'll put it on our desktop. Now, if we go back out here, we'll see photo test folder is here and you can come in here, go to products, USR, local, bin, and then this is the binary that you'd run. So you basically double click this or drag this into the terminal and then throw in whatever command lines you need. It's kind of helpful because it does give you some messages. So if I try to run this in terminal, just like it is, you'll see we'll get an error and it will throw out basically all the flags that you need to actually run this properly. So your detail, sample overlap, stuff like that. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's just go back to Xcode for now. And what you want to do is scroll all the way to the bottom and look for this right here. So when this program is running the main, you can pass in your own arguments here. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. This takes an array of optional strings. So what you can do here is just put in an array and start putting in your strings. And in order to know what to put in here, there's two ways of doing that. Again, you can go to your terminal and check here. It tells you you need your input folder, then output file name, detail level, and all that stuff. Or if you actually just build this like this with no string, then we get the usage message right here. So we need input folder, output file name, detail, and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and start building this out. In this case, we want to use users test desktop and Ornstein. So this is the location of all the image files, the pictures that we took. And then you want to do comma next line. And now we want to do our output file name. So we're going to do users test desktop and we'll call this Ornstein as well. And we're going to put this in underscore USDZ Ornstein underscore medium dot USDZ. So now we know that, that we're going to try to build this out as a medium level detail USDZ file. And the next line, so this is the detail level. So dash D for detail. And then we need another line here. So we'll put medium since we're building this out as medium. This next one is the sample overlap. So in this case, we'll do minus L and normal. And then the next one is the sequence. So we want to do dash O and we're going to say this is sequential because we took all our pictures sequentially and they're in order and then minus F normal. So again, you have your input, which is where all of your HEIC files are or wherever you put your pictures. And then you've got your output, what you want this USDZ file to be called. Then you want the detail level the sample overlap and the sample ordering. And then finally the feature sensitivity. This is kind of where it's useful to look at the terminal because here it tells you what each of these actually do. So detail, you get preview, reduced, medium, full, or raw. Those are the options you can choose from. And same thing with some of these other ones. There's a little explanation of what they actually do. Okay. And at this point we are ready to build and run. So let's hit play. And you may or may not get this message here, but it's basically this program is asking for permission to read and write to your desktop folder. So let's hit OK. And while we're doing that, we'll see that our Ornstein folder should show up. Yep, and here it is. You can hit spacebar in it. See that it was just created now. And it's 0 KB, there's nothing in it right now. So actually, if you double click, there's nothing. Once this whole process completes, there will be a file in there. Close it out for now and let's come back. We can close this too and we can close that too. And you can see in the background, it's already going. So what it's doing is actually reading all the pictures and it's looking for auxiliary depth data, but it's not finding any. So it's just not going to use depth for this. Now in this case, there's two things. One, I realized I forgot to push a two here, but the other thing is 
I'm not going to run this whole thing because it's going to take about 45 minutes to complete. But basically, once it gets all the way to the end, it's going to say complete if it was successful. And then we would check in our ornstein.usdz file. In this case, I already have one here. So I'm going to open this one up and this is the final result. You can see I've already done a preview and a reduced and another one on medium, but let's just look at this medium one for now. And this is the final result. You can double click on it and it will open it up into Xcode. Let's make this full screen. And then the other thing I'm going to do here is go click this and click on background black. and look how far you can get into this. Let's scroll up to his face. There it is. For a 3D model, that's pretty dang good. Let's zoom out and just scroll around. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. This feature is awesome in the new Xcode. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and hit the dinner bell to be notified of the next video. Thanks for watching.